Hi everyone, it's Mr. Barnes and my mustache, which I am growing in honor of Movember, which is Prostate Cancer Awareness Month. This is the Population and Transition Unit and a continuation of the subtopic Population Change. Today I'm going to talk about population pyramids. And specifically, IB would like you to be able to analyze population pyramids. So if you see a population pyramid on the exam, let's say for example, you should be able to break down that population pyramid to draw out the essential element or structure. And today, what I'm going to do is provide you with the tools that you'll need in order to do that. First, we need to know what a population pyramid is. Well, it's an age sex structure graph which shows demographic makeup of a specific country or region. On the, <clears throat> on the left you see males and on the right you see females and it's broken right down the middle into male and females. Along the bottom you see percent of population. Oftentimes you'll see whole numbers as well and in the examples that I'm about to show you that's the case. You'll see the whole number and the actual amount in either millions or tens of millions for the population. Along the x-axis you see age cohorts. So these are groupings of, uh, of ages. The youthful populations are along the bottom, 0 to 4, 5 to 9, 10 to 14. And along the top you see the elderly population, 80 plus, and just under that 75 to 79. With this population, sometimes you might have actually <coughs> see the year that they were born. So the elderly population born before 1920, and then the youthful population born uh, 1995 to 1999. The three things that I'd like you to focus on for the uh, following are the base, the sides, and the peak because these are the things that uh, you're going to be wanting to look at if you want to figure out something about a population pyramid. So again we're looking at the base of a pyramid, the sides of the pyramid, and the peak of the pyramid. Okay. So let's get into it. <clears throat> this is Burkina Faso which is an underdeveloped country in West Africa in 2011. This is the population, as you can see, it's in whole numbers now. This is the population in millions along the bottom. Males on the left, females on the right. Age cohorts from youngest to oldest, bottom to top. And let's basically just go ahead and start analyzing this pyramid. You can see that the base is quite wide. That means that there is a high birth rate. You can see that the sides are concave, which means that there is a high death rate. And you can also see that fewer people are living into the older age cohorts, which means that the life expectancy is quite low. So just by looking at this pyramid, you should be able to tell that this is an underdeveloped country. Moving up our development ladder, we see the Philippines. And the Philippines is a little bit different. There's a high birth rate still. The sides are not so concave, which means that the death rate is falling. And life expectancy has gotten a little bit better. It's still pretty low, but it's a little bit better than, than Burkina Faso. Again, moving up that development ladder, we see Argentina, the base, is starting to narrow a little bit, which means that the birth rate is probably falling. The sides now are becoming convex instead of concave, which means that the death rate has definitely begun falling, if not already quite low. And the life expectancy is much higher than the first two countries that we looked at. So this country, you can tell, is actually a little bit more developed than the first two countries that we looked at. The United States now, which is considered a developed country, you can see that the birth rate is pretty low. People are living uh, into the middle age cohorts, so that means that uh, death rate is also low. 
and life expectancy is quite high. As you can see, there are a lot of people living into the elderly cohorts. So this is a developed country, and you can tell just by looking at the pyramid. Finally, we see Japan, and Japan actually has a falling birth rate. Japan has, is experiencing negative growth. Just off the top of my head, I know that Japan's birth rate is 8 out of 1,000 in the population, and the death rate, you can see here, it's got a very low death rate, is 9 out of 1,000. And if you do the math as far as natural increase rate goes, 8 crude birth rate minus 9 crude death rate equals a natural increase of 0.1%, excuse me, negative 0.1%. It's experiencing negative growth. So um, the population of Japan is actually falling. And that doesn't count uh, in, take into account migration, but based on natural increase, uh, Japan is experiencing negative growth. Again, we look at the top, the, the top of the pyramid, it shows that uh, Japan has quite a high life expectancy. So this is a very developed country. There's something else that we can look at other than just the base, the sides, and the peak in population pyramids. If we are trying to figure out anomalies for certain countries, we can take a look at um, these ones, for example. So why would there be such a big arm sticking out here in this Bahrain uh, pyramid? So this is the male side of the pyramid, and this is the female side of the pyramid. Basically, this is due to migration. So there are my migrant workers uh, moving to Bahrain to, uh, to work in that country. And um, this is just one example of an anomaly. Here's another anomaly. Basically, China's growth was uh, increasing at a rapid pace uh, before 1978. And then after 1978, when China introduced its one-child policy, this is 20 years later, the population began to slow and then actually um, decline a little bit. So you can see uh, actually the, the implementation of China's one child policy just in the, by looking at the population pyramid. Finally, again, if we look at the difference between males and females, this is Germany from 1994, there's a lot fewer males here than there are females. And why is this so? Well, it's because of uh, World War I and II, basically. Because the males went off to, to war and fought and, uh, and died. And that leaves a huge discrepancy between the males and females. So just remember, if you're analyzing population pyramids, look at the base, look at the sides, look at the peak, and then try to think of any anomalies that you can use to explain why the pyramid is shaped the way that it is. And I hope this has helped. Thanks.